If Jesus came back tonight, where would you go? If today was the last day that you had on this earth, what would happen to you? Do you know where you would go? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? So you know in your heart right now what the answer to that question is. You see, I'm just here to tell you that, that we, we can see all the things that are happening on a global scale. In the United States of America, it's no secret, the Mississippi River has, has pretty much dried up. They're having trouble getting supplies up the river on barges. They're getting stuck. They're having to close certain parts of it down. Now, the question is, is why are they saying that the Mississippi has dried up because we're having a drought when all the other rivers are just a couple of feet low? All the ponds, rivers, and lakes around the country are just fine. But suddenly this one river has nearly dried up. I want you to do some research on the New Madrid fault line. And what happened the last time there was an earthquake on this fault line? There was reports back in the 1800s when this earthquake happened that the Mississippi River ran backwards for three days. And the land rolled in waves and it created Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. Now, you can also do some research on the Euphrates River over in, in the Middle East. The Bible says when the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the Euphrates River, the water was dried up and there were four angels that were loosed from beneath the river and they were to kill a third part of mankind on the earth. Now, you can say that's a coincidence, but I believe in what the Bible says. The Bible says when that river is dried up, it's a sign that we're in the end times. Jesus said, when you hear wars and rumors of wars and famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, we have more earthquakes today than we ever have in documented history since mankind could document earthquakes on this earth. Now the world's largest volcano in Hawaii is waking up. The Bible tells me that hell hath enlarged herself. The Bible also tells me that hell is beneath our feet. That when the pit of hell opens up, a great smoke arises from the pit like a furnace. Guys, do you see what I'm telling you here today? We're seeing all these signs. We see what Jesus said. The distress among nations with perplexity. The nation rising against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. And we're seeing all of these things take place. In Moscow, of Russia, they have an emergency broadcast system saying that they're about to detonate a nuclear weapon in, in Ukraine. They're openly saying that on the eve of the U.S. midterm elections, the United States is on the border of Ukraine and they are attempting to start a nuclear conflict <clears throat> before the midterm elections. Our, our government, our current leader situation is a laughingstock of the world. And as we see all these things happen and they're calling for a new world order, a one world government. We, we've talked about this before. The Pope has, has created a, 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 a one world religion center in Dubai with all the other leaders of these other false religions. And they're saying that, that there's only one God, that, they, that everybody worships the same God and they're calling it Chrislam. The Jewish people are putting up signs in Israel saying that their Messiah is here. And they have this guy that's over there and he's claiming that he's performed five miracles and, and they're saying that he's it. He's the Messiah. <clears throat> the Bible tells me that when Jesus returns, he will return on the clouds with great power and glory and he will destroy the enemy with the brightness of his coming. <clears throat> it tells me that Jesus said in Matthew 24, when they say that here he is in the desert, do not go out, do not believe it. And who are here he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Because the Son of Man will come as lightning strikes from the east even unto the west. There are distractions happening, guys. There are deceptions happening. We see all of these things that are biblical happening and taking in place. And, and, and we're being distracted from these things. We see the famines and the pestilences and the division. Jesus said there will be five in one house divided. The father against the son and the mother against the daughter. And, and so on and so forth. And, and, that, and that people will, will, will hate one another. They will be offended. We see all these things happening, but what I'm telling you today is, guys, why would you take a chance? And this message is for those out there who are on the fence, 
who say, yeah, I believe in God. I pray every once in a while when I need him, but I'm just not really ready to be sold out just yet. I'm not ready to just be on fire for the Lord. I, I'm ready to, to just, just live my life. What if you were appointed to a trial tomorrow? What if you were appointed to be in the tribulation in the next week and you were put on trial for your faith? Would you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him? Jesus said, he who saves his life shall lose it. And he who loses his life for my name's sake shall gain life. <clears throat> what do you think he's talking about there? Guys, this nation's never experienced persecution. But rest assured, it's going to come. Jesus wasn't talking to the non-believers when he said, you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. You will be delivered up and put on trial. You will be put to death for my name's sake. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But in me, you will have peace. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You see, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. I'm telling you this tonight, guys, because it's time to put away that lukewarm, excuse me, that lukewarm lifestyle. It's time to put away that malice. It's time to put away that strife. It's time to put away all of these divisions. It's time to put away jealousy and envy and greed and all of these afflictions that we deal with. You see, Jesus said something really important in the Bible. He said that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, that's pretty important. If you can't just live by bread alone, that means that if you don't have the word of God, the sword of the spirit, then you're not going to make it out of here alive. He said something else that's really important. The Bible talks about a lot of sins that can get you into hell and keep you out of heaven. But he said that unless you become as children, unless you become as little children, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, when you think about that, you have to look at how children act and behave. When they see somebody new, they're so excited. Hey, I'm so glad you're here. It's just Wow, this is great. We can play. We can, you, I'll share all my stuff with you. We can just, wow, it's great to see you. But what do we do when somebody comes in the driveway? Well, I wonder what they want. Or did you hear about what so-and-so said? Did you hear about what so-and-so did? Can you believe these people got the nerve to do this? This is going on in the churches, guys. I prayed about this so hard and I said, God, how can these church folks if they're so good and so righteous, how can they have this bitterness in their spirit? Is this, is this what it's going to be like in heaven? I'm not sure that I'd want to be involved with that, with, with, a, with a group of people like that. And I felt like God was laughing and he said, unless you become as little children, you will not enter my kingdom. And, and as, I, as I began to, to realize what he was saying there, we're going to have to have something in our hearts that is a product of him, and that's love. The Bible says God is love, and the life of God is the light of men. And if we don't have the fruits of the Spirit, that gentleness, that love, that kindness, that self-control, we're going to have problems when we get to the gates. I'm coming to you tonight, guys, because I want to tell you something. There is a shaking coming to this nation there is a shaking coming to the United States of America and the people in it are not prepared for it. Guys, what are you waiting for if you know you have an opportunity to be a servant of the living God? All of his words are promises. He tells you these stories of these prophets and these people who went through these things where the reason why Daniel was in the lion's den and he sent and God sent angels to close the mouths of the lions and the reason that he was on the battlefield with David, the smallest kid who went out there and slayed the giant, the reason that he was with Moses when he went before the pharaohs, the reason that he stood in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will never leave you nor forsake you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants 
of the Lord. You know what that means? That means I promise that what I did for them, I will do for you too if you serve me. Jesus said, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone serves me, where I am, there my servant will be also, and my Father will honor him. Do you see what I'm saying tonight, guys? Those promises in that book are not for you if you don't serve him. The Bible tells me that a tree that does not bring forth fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You don't want to be that. You have an opportunity right now right now to serve him. You have an opportunity to lay it all down and say, God, I know that I've been running from you for all this time. I know that I've done all these horrible things, but tonight I want to lay it all down at your feet. Tonight I want to give it all to you in the name of Jesus. I want to deny myself and take up my cross and follow you, Jesus, because I know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you came to give me life and to give it to me more abundantly. Today is the day of salvation, guys. We're not promised another minute on this earth. It's about forgiveness. The Bible says, how can God forgive you if you can't forgive your brother that has sinned against you? There is no way that we're going to be able to be forgiven if we carry unforgiveness in our spirit. It is time to put those things away and become as children. Have that childlike love and innocence and say, you know what? Instead of, instead of every time you see somebody fall, if you're in the church and you see somebody slip up and fall, instead of pointing that finger and saying, aha, I knew, I knew that they were bad. I knew that they were evil. How about we say, man, so-and-so sure is having some troubles. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them today in the name of Jesus. Let's come together and pray for this nation. Let's come together and pray for these people who are twisted up and tied up in this evil. Let's pray that God would change their heart and, 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 and blind their eyes from their plans of wickedness and move them into a plan for his will and purpose. Because the Bible tells me the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There's somebody out there tonight who needs to hear this because you're, you're, you're on the fence. Because Jesus says, I would rather that you were hot or cold than lukewarm. For if you are lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I will vomit you out of my mouth. It's going to be better off for the non-believer in that day than the one who says they believe in him and do not keep his commandments. Guys, hell is a real place and judgment is a real thing. And I believe with all my heart that we are not far away from that. Don't bury your head in the sand. Prepare your heart and get as close to God as you can. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. You've got a chance today. And I'm telling you this because I care about what happens to you. If you're living in a lifestyle of sin, it is not too late to repent and turn from that unrighteousness. He loves you so much. He knows how many, he knows the number of the hairs that's on your head. Do you think that he doesn't care about what happens to you? There's a reason why he's been with you. There's a reason why you have that testimony, why you've been through so much. No matter what your circumstance is today, no matter who you are, or where you've come from, Jesus said the first will be the last and the last will be the first. The angels rejoiced more, rejoiced more in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 99 righteous. He's been waiting for you all this time. Take those things in your life that separate you from God and get rid of them. There's no reason to tarry any longer. Judgment is coming and Jesus is coming to receive his bride. It's, it's, it's the final ride, guys, and you don't want to miss it. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I ask that you would share this message. Pray for your neighbors. Love your enemies. Bless those that curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. His ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. He loves you and the time for salvation is at hand. We're living in an hour of revelation. It's going to get real, real soon, folks. Get ready. Prepare your heart. Prepare your house. 
and give your life to Jesus Christ today. I love y'all. God bless y'all in the name of Jesus.